welcome to this session. I'm very, very happy uh, this afternoon uh, to facilitate this session. I know there are a couple of people still coming in, but I think we can start with the uh, preliminaries and uh, the rest will join us. So um, the first thing I'm going to do uh, is to introduce our very eminent uh, panelists here and uh, uh, share briefly the program that we shall go through and then we get the session up and running. So uh, once again, uh, I'm very honored and privileged to have the opportunity to moderate this session. Uh, it's an exciting topic and I'm really looking forward to an interesting discussion. My name is Timothy Rubanga and I come from Uganda, that's uh, in East Africa. I am the commissioner for monitoring and evaluation in the office of the prime minister. And I have been uh, spearheading and championing the development of uh, evaluation reforms in that country, but also working with the colleagues in the African region in several African countries for the last 15 years. I um, have the honor to have related and networked and worked with the many of you uh, over the years in this topic. And I'm really excited to see that we have reached this far and we are having these discussions to further strengthen our national capacities to ensure that we have strong evaluation systems that can be useful and valuable to our countries, but also that can add, um, uh, meet the demands for evidence by our policymakers. So, um, I now have the opportunity to introduce the panelists, and this is the order in which I will, I will, I will go. Uh, the first, uh, the first panelist that I will introduce is the one on my uh, far left, and he is Joao de Pina Mendes Cardoso. Uh, forgive me if the pronunciation is not uh, the right one. My Spanish is like very small, very, very small. Uh, Jao is currently the president of the National Institute of Statistics of Cape Verde. He was director of the Department of National Accounts at the NSO. He has been a technician at the same institution since 2009. When he was a technician, he taught international economics, development economics, and macroeconomics at higher education institutions. He is a graduate with a master's degree in economics from the Faculty of Economics of the University of Coimbra. Uh, welcome, uh, Zhao. The second panelist is Madame Nameriam Mengistu. Yes. Oh, uh, she's not here. Uh, Madame Nameriam has not yet joined us, and I will introduce her when the opportunity arises. Uh, the third panelist is Madame Elena uh, Kukarevich. Oh. And again, <laughs> forgive me if I don't pronounce that very well. Uh, Madame um, Elena um, seated immediately to my left uh, has worked uh, in statistics for the last 30 years. She has a very long term experience in uh, the field of statistics. 14 years as deputy chairperson of Bellstat. She is a member of the National Council for Sustainable Development and heads the SDG monitoring team. As part of the ongoing work on monitoring and, evaluation, and evaluating the achievements of the SDGs in the country, a national SDG reporting platform has been established with up-to-date information on the current SDG situation in that country. It is adapted to the SDMX, Statistical Data Exchange st Standard, 
which facilitates data transfer to the international level to ensure necessary data disaggregation and to fill data gaps. It also, it also has GIS technologies, which have been introduced in the calculation of SDG indicators, an assessment of Belarus progress towards SDGs from 2015 to 2020 has been made. Uh, join me in welcoming Madam Elena. And my third panelist um, is Madam Camille Cheris Spencer. Uh, Madam Camille uh, is the program director for monitoring and evaluation in the Ministry of Planning and Development in Trinidad, Trinidad and, and Tobago. She holds a master's degree in government from the University of West Indies, St. Augustine, and also has specialized training in M&D results-based management, RBM. Uh, she's uh, done a lot of work in strategic planning and implementation, public policy and public administration, project management and change management. Mrs. Spencer has been involved in the field of M&E for over 12 years and is responsible for leading and guiding her team in the institutional, institutionalization of a culture of results-based management through the entire public sector of Trinidad and Tobago. Madam Spencer also currently serves as the country representative to the Caribbean community, CARICOM, RBM Leadership Group, and is on the board of directors of the National Physical Planning Authority of Trinidad and Tobago. Well, welcome, Madam um, Camille. So colleagues, friends, as you can see, uh, we have um, uh, a, a team of very eminent panelists. Uh, in addition, we have uh, a strong support team here uh, from the Secretariat. I didn't get your name. Janet. Uh, Janet from the Secretariat, uh, most welcome. And also we have uh, teams that are supporting uh, the translation movement of microphones and so on. And uh, I recognize them. Um, the second point that I want to communicate quickly uh, is that uh, there's interpretation and uh, we, shall, we shall have interpretation in English in channel two, uh, French, uh, you can access French in channel one and Spanish in channel three, okay? And if you have any uh, difficulties with the translation, please just call uh, one of the support teams uh, and they will be happy to come and assist you. Um, the third point I want to make is that I will request us to be quite precise when we are making comments. First, the panelists, uh, we have had a discussion, we have agreed, they will speak to the, stick to the time that is allocated to them when they are making the presentations. And the idea is really to have adequate time at the end of the session for a discussion, because um, once, once we have received the key messages uh, from the presenters uh, on the questions that they are answering, then it is uh, always um, uh, very valuable to have adequate time for us to interact and, and, and get some questions um, and also comments uh, raised. So in order to do that, we will request that you be quite precise when you're raising um, your comments. Um, so finally, um, uh, we had prepared a set of questions and we have checked that the presentations of the panelists actually address these questions quite in detail. So I'm going to limit my questions to them because I should not be asking the same questions that they have already addressed in the presentations to not add value, rather we we'll provide more time. Now, briefly as a, an introduction to the topic, I think we all agree that uh, data and statistics are a key, key ingredient or input to evaluations and evidence. In fact, if you don't have good data systems and statistics, uh, you are going to have a challenge with doing um, a convincing or a comprehensive evaluation. So it is an important uh, uh, element of any evaluation or the gener generation of evidence in our ecosystem. And over the years, we have made significant 
progress in all the countries and in all the institutions in terms of investing in data and statistics. However, the NEC, the seventh NEC, this conference gives us an opportunity to reevaluate and review um, what is the status of the systems out there? Are they adequate? What lessons have we learned? And in doing that, we want to answer the questions of what, what exists, how robust are they, and so on. Number two, why? If there are weaknesses and failures, why? What are those issues that we need to tackle? And more importantly, at the end of this session, what we are required to hand over to the Secretariat is some kind of suggestion on how do we do better? How do we promote um, innovations, uh, methodological innovations for a new normal? How do we improve and strengthen further to make this uh, more relevant and useful for policy making? Uh, with those few remarks, I would like to stop there. I see we are all eager and happy to listen to our panelists. So I want to take this opportunity to invite the first panelist, uh, Zhao, and he's going to give us a presentation for 10 minutes, uh, focusing on, um, on some of the areas that I've hinted uh, here. So Zhao, you have the floor. In terms of procedure, you can choose to present from where you are, or you can uh, choose to use the podium. Uh, uh, it doesn't really matter. We want that flexibility. You're welcome. Sorry, I will speak in Italian. Yes, I will try. <laughs> so I invite everyone to, to put the translation. <laughs> <laughs> who don't speak English to put the, who don't speak Italian to put the, the translation. Comincio mia presentazione perché parlando della esperienza di Capo Verde in produrre le indicatore Excuse me, sorry. Everyone have the... If you can take it. Yes, yes, yes. Prova, ci provo. Forza. In Italian, sì. It will be in Italian. Yes. Maybe I... Spero che non ti sbagli. Yes, you can start. Uh, ok. Aspare, quindi siamo. Sì, vado. Allora, dicevo io, uh, non si può valutare, non si può fare la valutazione del sistema senza indicatori, senza, senza i dati. Allora, parlerò un po' dell'esperienza di Capo Verdi, della produzione dei dati su obiettivi di sviluppo sostenibile e su agenda di Africa 2060. Uh, sarà un po' di questa storia che cerco di raccontare, uh, spero di riuscire. Uh, avanti. Ah, sono io che controllo. Eh? Chiedo scusa perché sono un po' nervoso. Così, va bene. Come andrà? Try. Ok. It's... Ok, dicevo io, cerco di raccontare un po' della storia di Capo Verde nella produzione della, degli indicatori di... De, dei sviluppi sostenibili di Agenda Africa 2060, un po' della storia di, eh, che non è stato facile, allora per quello voglio ah, di far questa, raccontare un po' di questa storia per vedere l'esperienza dell'esperienza di Capo Verde. Allora, INE è, in è l'Istituto di Statistica di Capo Verde e produceva i, i dati, il rapporto dei 
di agenda separata, separati, e 2030 e 2060. Allora, finché eh, l'Unione Africana è, è, ha deciso di mettere insieme la... No, di, allora, di mettere insieme alla fine le, uh, le agende 2060 con l'agenda 2030. Allora, fare la corrispondenza fra le due agende per semplificare la produzione delle, della, dei indicatori. Allora, questo ha semplificato la nostra vita, perché così andiamo avanti di forma più semplice. Allora, uh, UNECA ha deciso di fare la coincidenza fra le Agenda 2060 e Agenda 2030. Allora alla fine abbiamo qua l'Agenda 2030 eh, e l'Agenda 2060, allora UNECA, UNECA ha fatto allineamenti fra le due. Allora, come potete vedere, la, eh, dalla mia... Qua abbiamo le, uh, gli indicatori che siamo riusciti a produrre a Capo Verde dell'agenda uh, 2030, 2060 sopra e 2030 sotto. Sopra abbiamo, siamo riusciti a produrre 56,8 di indicatori eh, di, uh, di agenda 2060, sotto siamo riusciti a produrre 36,9% dei de indicatori che c'entra con l'agenda 2030 di uh, obiettivi, uh, svu obiettivi sviluppo sostenibile. Allora, per tentare di spiegare meglio cosa un ECA ha fatto che un ECA ha fatto questa corrispondenza fra le agenda 2030 e agenda 2060. Abbiamo qua, uh, per esempio, per capire meglio, uh, per esempio, obiettivo 1, eradicazione della povertà, fame zero, e impiego e crescita economica, che 8 città uh, e, e comunità sostenibile, per esempio, corrisponde la, a, a indicatori 1 dell'Agenda 2060, uh, che c'entra con la qualità di vita della gente. E l'altro è, per esempio, qua, Agenda 20 sostenibile, le, gli obiettivi sostenibili abbiamo qua, 6, 7, 13, 15, che corrisponde a 7, che uh, c'entra con economics, con l'economia e l'ambiente sostenibile. E dopo alla fine abbiamo per esempio le 16, che è, uh, uh, che è SDG, che corrisponde con l'agenda 2063 dell'Unione Africana, che uh, pace, giustizia, istituzione robusta, che c'entra con 12 de, uh, dell'agenda 2063. Questo è solo per raccontare che c'è una certa corrispondenza fra le due agende. Questo è stato un bel lavoro che ha, facili facili eh, che fac che ha facilitato la vita all'INE, all all'Istituto di Statistica. Allora, qual è stata la eh, contribuzione dei dell'INE o della statistica, l'istituzione della statistica, nella produzione di questi uh, di questo rapporto che è molto importante, che noi produciamo gli indicatori, dopo la direzione del piano produce, uh, fa la valutazione dei de, de stati di esecuzione della, della politica. No? Allora, noi produciamo indicatori. Direzione del piano, c'è un nucleo lì a direzione del piano che fa la valutazione dell'implementazione inseguendo l'indicatore che l'INE produce, eh, più o meno questo. Allora, 
questa è la storia. Allora, come dicevo prima, fino adesso abbiamo prodotto 56,8, praticamente 56,8% degli indicatori dei de SDG e 67,6% diciamo, dei indicatori che c'entra con l'agenda 2060. Allora, credo che è stato un bel... Un bel sforzo eh? per la difficoltà che questo rappresenta perché i dati non sono mica facili di trovare in Africa. Allora, com'è che siamo riusciti, com'è che produciamo questo rapporto, diciamo, che, che mette insieme tutti questi dati? Qual è la logica? Allora abbiamo un, di un dipartimento della linea che è responsabile per fare la compilazione dei dati, dei indicatori. Raccoglie i dati internamente, quelli che c'entrano con, con le due agende, 2030 e 2060, e raccoglie i dati che noi non abbiamo fuori. E fa la compilazione, alla fine è questo. Di una, di una forma sem semplice, e questo è il, uh, il rapporto e la responsabilità di questo, di questo dipartimento qui produci uh, indicatori 2030 e 2060 prendendo i dati fuori e dentro le linee. Vi dico che la maggior parte dei dati si trova dentro le linee. Allora, qual è stata la difficoltà, diciamo, e, e la nostra prospettiva in questa nella produzione di questi indicatori che sono importantissimi per fare la valutazione del del sviluppo della dell implementazione della politica a Capo Verde, abbiamo trovato alcune difficoltà. La prima, manca, mancherebbe, è l'insufficienza di, di statistiche no? in vari settori che non, che non hanno, che non producono la statistica adeguata e con la qualità accettabile, diciamo. Questo è parlando di, di quelli che producono i dati esterni alle linee. La seconda difficoltà è la difficoltà di comunicazione no? Del, col, nel rapporto col proprio dipartimento e col proprio istituto che sono fuori, che non hanno questa capacità di produrre i dati, allora comunicare con uno che non è capace di, e che non capisce di statistica o oh, di dati è un po' difficile, è un'altra difficoltà che abbiamo trovato. E la terza è la i dati disattuali, non attuali, no? abbiamo trovato i dati di 1960-70 che bisogna attualizzare, allora un altro problema. E trovare qualcuno che dopo ci fa arrivare i dati, gli indicatori. Alla nostra prospettiva, cosa pensiamo per il futuro? Uh, aumentare il livello della disaggregazione dell'informazione, il nostro desiderio ridurre il tempo di pubblicazione di, del rapporto, di produrre il rapporto, perché infatti ci porta tanto. Uh, anche utilizzare meglio i dati amministrativi. I dati amministrativi sono importanti, fa ridurre il costo de, della statistica, no? per produrre la statistica. Allora, se, se troviamo un modo di, di utilizzare i dati amministrativi, Sarà... abbiamo già cominciato vi dico a utilizzare i dati amministrativi per quello abbiamo ridotto un po' il costo della produzione della statistica in generale anche dei, dei indicatori dei SDG e, e il nostro obiettivo è anche aumentare eh, e il numero di indicatori più di quelli che di 56% che vi ho fatto vedere Con, abbiamo ok grazie Abbiamo, uh, abbiamo, senso 20, abbiamo fatto senso, eh, il censo della popolazione in 2021 all'anno scorso e con i dati del censo della popolazione credo che avremo più uh, dati per produrre più indicatori dei uh, SDG. Uh, un altro uh, responsabilità chi ne 
l'Istituto di Statistica di Cabo Verde in questo momento è di produrre un handbook sulla governance. Questo ci ha dato un po' di capacità di, di produrre anche indicatori che c'entrano con SDG, perché Capo Verde ha questa responsabilità di produrre la handbook, handbook su governance e tanti di questi indicatori si trovano dentro di questo handbook, solo per, per capire, per esempio, uh, nell'handbook abbiamo non discrimination, uh, Uh, equality, participation, openness, che sono tutti indicatori trattati dentro dell'handbook che è la responsabilità di Capo Verde produrre questo handbook. Allora ci, ci ha dato un po' di capacità di produrre questo indicatore anche. Uh, e anche questi indicatori che sono già dentro l'handbook uh, vanno di incontro a SDG. Eh? Se guardiamo qua, per esempio, uh, quando parliamo di non discriminazione, o oh, non discriminazione e di quality, stiamo parlando di SD 16B1, allora ci ha facilitato la vita. Quando parliamo di SDG partecipazione, stiamo parlando di SDG 16.7.1. Allora, uh, e questo ci ha, ci ha dato un, un, un savoir faire no? che, che, che è stato utile. Allora, alla fine abbiamo. Uh, uh, il rapporto che può condividere. Abbiamo solo per vedere il rapporto che abbiamo fatto. Questo è il rapporto, con tutti gli indicatori, potete andare lì. Abbiamo qua tutti gli indicatori, indicatori che abbiamo prodotto uh, in questo... Uh, per esempio qua prima abbiamo... Yeah. l'indicazione della povertà abbiamo prodotto questo indicatore so. allora andate sul page di Line e vi sarà possibile di guardare la produzione di questi indicatori che c'entra con SDG e anche con l'agenda 2060 grazie per la vostra pazienza thank you thank you very much Thank you very much, uh, Zhao. And um, uh, I'm sure we have all taken note, uh, notes as well. We shall come back to him at discussion. Uh, our second presenter is supposed to be uh, Nemariam, but he is just coming and uh, it will be unfair for him. I want to give him one or two minutes to cool down and I will introduce him uh, uh, properly. But uh, 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 let me invite uh, Elena, um to uh, make her presentation and uh, uh, i uh, as i stated at the beginning uh elena addressed uh all the questions that we raised uh like all the other presenters and so um, um the presentation is very much reflective of what we are uh anticipating so elena you are most welcome to make the yes the participants in the Republic uh, of Belarus. Uh, the National Statistical Committee is uh, responsible for organizing and coordinating the monitoring and, and the evaluation of SDDs. This process builds on the national list of SDDs indicators. The list has been developed in close cooperation with all data providers and with the active uh, participation uh, of uh, civil society. The main conditions for its uh, creation were maximum harmonization with the global list of the national United National Statistics Divisions, relevance of the indicator uh, for Republic of Belarus and data availability. Today, the list comprises 267 indicators, of which 166 
coin coincide uh, with the global indicators and uh, 101 are proxy indicators that reflect the country's national development priorities. The data availability uh, is almost 90% uh, with uh, time series deals uh, where possible from year uh, 2000. Data are produced by uh, 25 data providers, the key one being Bellstat 106 indicator. Bellstat also provides methodological uh, guidance uh, for the development of indicator by the data providers. In 2018, a national reporting platform was launched with the financial support of the United Nations Development Program. It's based on the national uh, uh, on the national list of SDGs indicators. The platform serves three main purposes. It acts uh, as a portal for data collection. Twenty five data producers send up to data information to the start through personal accounts. Two, uh, works as a tool for dissemination of uh, up-to-date information on the SDGs to national and international users. Uh, it provides uh, multilingual support, Russian and English, and implements uh, modern visualization methods, analytical tables, charts, maps. Insurance, insurance interaction with custodian agencies of the United Nations system, the platform is adapted to the SDMAX data and metadata extent standard. This has enabled uh, the uploading of country data sets into SDD's data lab of the UN uh, statistics divisions. To ensure quality monitoring of the SDDs, they'll start efforts uh, are focused on the improving data availability and obtaining a disaggregated data on uh, vulnerable population group adapting international methodology to the national context and uh, setting for innovating tools and data, and data sources. Following the main uh, principles of 2030 agenda, leaving no one behind, uh, the ongoing household sample survey programs have been supplemented uh, with new indicators to monitoring uh, lifelong uh, lifelong uh, learning for adults and youth, economic activity of persons with disabilities, multi-dimensions uh, poverty uh, using the context of at risk of poverty or social exclusion, uh, level of moderate uh, of uh, severe food in, uh, security based on the FAO food insecurity experience scales, uh, satisfaction with government services. Conducted for the first time in Belarus, a comprehensive, a comprehensive uh, survey of persons with disabilities, according to the criteria of the Washington Group on Disability Statistics, allowed for producing a comprehensive description of the situation of persons with disabilities in the country, as well as for stepping up or work to create a barrier-free environment uh, for this category, category of citizen. Improving, access, improving accessibility of the service uh, demand by disabled person and uh, implementing uh, other measures undertaken uh, to uh, fulfill the commitments under the Convention on uh, the Rights uh, of Persons with Disabilities. In 2019, for the first set time, Belarus participated in the multiple, multiple indicator cluster survey to assess the situation of children and women, mix six 
which sourced data on uh, 21 SDDs indicators measuring access to basic services, healthcare, use of contraception, enrollment in quality education, prevalence of uh, child marriages, discrimination uh, and violence, gender, uh, gender equality, and other. This is not only a valid uh, a vote uh, for achieving the required level of data disaggregation, but also filled existing data gaps. Future plan are to conduct a survey on measuring uh, violence against women to obtain missing data on SDD 16. Today, the special data are recognized as uh, vulnerable sources for filling existing data gaps. We have introduced uh, this technology in the calculation of nine indicators from the national SDGs list and developed methodologies for their calculation. For some of the SDGs indicators, use of the special technology has uh, uh, become uh, the only means uh, of uh, obtaining data. Five years into the implementation of the 2030 agenda, the global statistical community has begun to measure the interim outputs of SDGs. For this purpose, international organizations have developed various approaches based on the use of data from time ser uh, series preset uh, target values and um, comparisons uh, cross country. Bill Start uh, has explored the existing international methodologies uh, for measuring progress and analyzed the possibility of applying uh, them to the Republic of Belarus. Thus, a combination of Eurostat and UNESCOP approaches was used to track progress at the national level. Aggregated uh, estimates of the SDGs according to their uh, current states showed the, that more than 62% uh, of indicators were making progress toward their targets. The indicated target values uh, for all SDGs set for 2030 have been achieved or will be achieved at the current level of uh, effort uh, for 80% of the indicators. Uh, one of the key objectives of the 2030 agenda is uh, eliminate inequalities uh, not only across countries, but also within nations. Therefore, one of the area of the global initiative uh, for the implementation of the SDGs and their localization and monitoring. Today, uh, Unify's original list of SDGs indicator has been developed in Belarus. It includes uh, 145 indicators. 85 of them correspond to the indicators from the national list, and 26 reflect specifics of regional development. This list uh, covers all uh, 17 uh, goals and uh, 75 targets. The regional reporting platform, uh, which we are current working on, will be an, eff an effective tool for monitoring and evaluating progress uh, made by the regionals towards the SDGs and uh, taking measures to reduce interregional differentiations. Uh, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Elena, for that uh, exciting presentation. Uh, let me now take the opportunity to invite um, Madam Camille Spencer uh, to make her presentation. Well, good afternoon. 
Wake up, wake up. Who's sleeping? Shake, shake yourself. Touch the person next to you. Tell them, wake up, wake up. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, I am happy to be here to share with you from a country perspective on this whole idea of data. But I've chosen to select the topic about strengthening our evidence based decision making at a country level. And I'm using my country, Trinidad and Tobago, as a little case study here this afternoon. Just for you to know where we are, Trinidad and Tobago is located in the beautiful islands of the Caribbean. All right. We are uh, just close to Venezuela, if you can point to South America there. That's where we are. We are the island of Steel Pan. The Steel Pan was originated and created here in Trinidad and Tobago. Sun, sea, sand, calypso, the ultimate vacation. <laughs> right. So with that being said, just to let you know, I'm going to be focusing on the latter part of our discussions this afternoon, basically trying to answer the question, how can we ensure that we have credible uh, national data systems to support the SDGs and, of course, our monitoring and evaluation system? And by the end of my presentation, I'm going to tell you five things in answering that question. One, I'm going to tell you that we need to focus on modernizing and building capacity in our national statistical system. Secondly, I'm going to share with you that we need to ensure that data is part of the policy cycle of national development planning and policy development. Thirdly, I'm going to share with you, we need to engage in partnerships. We need to partner where you don't have the capacity as a small island developing state of a population of only 1.4 million people, we need to partner. And I'm going to tell you, fourthly, focus on culture. And lastly, fifthly, to ensure that there is a high level political ownership for data. So again, to understand where we are coming from, Trinidad and Tobago, I want to start off by saying this quote, that data is the lifeblood of decision making and the raw material for accountability. And this is part of a quote that was done by a report from the UN on mobilizing data revolution for sustainable development. If we do not have data and we are making decisions and we are making policies and we are making plans, then we are actually doing decision making by VAPs, by opinions, by ideas, by you went to bed, you had a dream and you wake up, that's decision making. And that's the alternate reality that many of us live in. Am I right? Yeah, nobody in senior, you can pop your hand, right? Okay, so Trinidad and Tobago, when it comes to data, I, when I'm preparing this presentation, the thought came to mind, a tale of two cities. And if you're familiar with this uh, Charles Dickens um, novel written in 1859, set within the time period of London and Paris before and during the French Revolution, it begins by saying it was the best of times and it was the worst of times, correct. And so when it comes to data in Trinidad and Tobago, we have made some key achievements uh, in terms of our national development strategy, Vision 2030. That's what we call it. We have championed as one of our pillars of development, speaking to good governance and an objective that focuses specifically on creating and strengthening our national statistical system to deliver high quality user-friendly, relevant, and timely data to support the achievement of our national development goals. We have also been fortunate within the Caribbean, one of 10 Caribbean nations, to present our voluntary national review report in July 2020, where we were not able to report on the implementation of all the SDGs, all 17 goals, but we reported on eight of them. Again, and I'm going to tell you when we come to the challenges why we only did eight and not all 17. But out of that eight um, indicators we did, we looked at indicators, uh, goal three, four, five, um, including 17 partnerships for the goals. But Trinidad and Tobago, in terms of us, the best of times, we have also developed what we call a national performance framework that features key indicators and targets that we would like to achieve by a certain period of time to vision 2030, aligning to that. But this particular framework, I know it's tiny, it's up to our first 
uh, short-term planning period. And now we're in the process of developing another medium-term framework and then onto our long-term. Why am I highlighting that report? It is because it uses data that not only do we have lofty ideas and lofty plans, but how are we going to measure our progress? How are we going to track whether we are achieving the results that we have set out to achieve? And by extension, just giving you a sample, we don't only measure, but we also report using data to report on our progress. And we call this our annual reports and performance, where we don't just have a lovely plan, which is 2030. We don't just have the indicators to measure, but we tell the people, we tell the public how government has performed over the period. So that's what we have been doing with data. That's the good side. That's the some things. But let me tell you about some of our key challenges. On the other side, it was the worst of times, is that currently we have a weak or archaic national statistical system. Um, I'm gonna tell you some more about our central statistical office, which we call a CSO. Its act was founded since 1972. It's organizational structure, which hasn't changed since then. We do have issues in terms of capacity, human resource capacity, skilled and trained persons to actually do data collection, to analyze the data, et cetera. We do have some challenges when it comes to coordination, not just at a governmental level, because I speak from the behalf of my ministry, Ministry of Planning and Development, but coordination within ministries, coordination across ministries, <laughs> coordination between government and non-government stakeholders. Am I speaking to the choir here this afternoon? All right, so we have those challenges as well. And of course, one of the ultimate challenges I believe and most of us have in common is that there is a limited buy-in for data at all levels of government. You have a few of us who belong to the choir, the, the soprano, the tenor section, the alto, but then there are some people who refuse to join the choir and they are the ones that hold the power. And that's a challenge that we've had. So getting to answering the question, so how can we strengthen, how can we build credible data systems uh, towards supporting evidence-based decision making from a country level? I can tell you from the Trinidad and Tobago's experience, I'm gonna focus on those five things that I mentioned. And the first that I mentioned was about modernizing or building capacity in your national statistical system. For our presentation today, I'm just referencing our national statistical office, which is the Central Statistical Office. What we have been doing over the last few years is that we are in the process of transforming our Central Statistical Office and bringing them from the Stone Age into the modern age. We can't talk about having data and having credible and reliable data if our systems are not where it should be, if the quality of our technology that we are using is not where it should be, if the capacity doesn't exist. And as a small island developing state, that is one of the first things that we need to do to strengthen our data collection. We need to strengthen our institutions that, resolve, that revolve around data. So specifically, we are focusing on our legislation, rewriting the legislation. A bill right now is before our parliament, which will then give the Central Statistical Office greater authority. And, and when I say authority, giving itself a position where that, that doesn't only coordinate data, but that there's a requirement by law to produce data. As we know, they would, as from the ground up, you have to actually go and generate the data from somewhere. Somebody has to send it to you and then you have to do the work. The metadata comes from somewhere, then you have to do the work. Our challenge is that our system is so disconnected that where data lies, it's not funneled to this institution. So now we are introducing legislation to support that. We are also introducing in our central statistical office, which will now eventually become our National Statistical Institute of Trinidad and Tobago is capacity building. We are training our staff, we are training our people, we are introducing new technologies and innovation. So instead of, if you can recall, I, this may be a little um, basic for some of you, but it's where we are. When you have to do surveys or you have to go and collect data out on, this, on the road or somewhere in communities, you have this paper-based system and you go and you still have to tick, I still have to put, no, we are trying to introduce new technology where we don't have to actually go moving from a paper-based system to a technology-based system. And those are some of the things that we are doing. And in doing that, we are able to now translate data in a much quicker fashion. We are able to, oh, good. I have two minutes. 
Let's go. Again, I'm from the Caribbean, right? <laughs> so I'll tell you what we have been doing to strengthen evidence-based decision making is a mixed approach, not just focusing on the statistical statistical system, but also focusing on introducing data and including it in our national policy cycle. It is from the beginning to the end. Usually we, we look for data after we have done the planning, after we have done the expenditure and the execution, and then we do an evaluation. But what we have been trying to do is incorporate from the very beginning. So when it comes to results-based budgeting, we have incorporated data. So results-based planning, there is data for a public sector investment program. Before monies are expended to anyone, you must present your monitoring and valuation framework. How are we going to be able to track the performance and get the value for money from the expenditure? Thirdly, engage in partnerships. When you don't have the resources as a small island development state, we must partner. We have been partnering with the SDG uh, fund, and they speak about modernizing our statistical ecosystem. And this is where they are assisting us in getting data specific as well to the SDGs so that we can actually report more effectively. We are also partnering and collaborating with UNICEF with the sixth rung of our multiple indicator cluster survey we call MIX. And this is the largest household uh, survey that was going to be done. It's going to get data for all of the SDGs that we need to report on. I'm coming on home. Focus on culture institutionalizing a culture of resource-based management in the public sector, in government is critical. We speak about here, um, strengthening our data collections and systems at the local level, not just at the national level, but focusing on getting the data so it's a bottom up and a top down approach. Trinidad and Tobago for the Caribbean, we were the first to develop our national monitoring evaluation policy in 2012. Now we are developing our second policy, which should be completed by January 2023. Again, this policy now mandates data collection throughout all of government. We are focusing on capacity building, et cetera. And finally, how do we, we have credible data systems? We need to ensure that there is political buy-in, ownership at the highest level. As you are aware, as fellow practitioners, if we don't get the involvement of the cabinet or the governance structure to buy into data, then we, we go back to square one. All of this will be null and void. They are the ones that drive the, the demand. They drive the budgeting to finance data. They drive um, the various ministries and local levels beneath to be able to come together. So with that, I'll tell you, buying across government recommendations. Move the piano slowly to the left, meaning it takes time. Don't do things too rashly. And finally, partner, partner, partner. Thank you. Thank you very much for a very warm, another very warm uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Madam Camille Spencer. Now I have the opportunity and I'm trying to rush to uh, really complete and get, get some time for discussion of introducing our fourth panelist, um, Mr. Uh, Nemarian, Nemarian Johannes Mengistu. Uh, Johannes, uh, uh, we apologize to him. Uh, mm -hmm. According to our communication, he thought he was making a presentation tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So we have kind of ambushed him. Uh, so we thank him for being ready uh, to adjust and is now ready to make the presentation. So I will invite him to the podium as I introduce him. Uh, Nemariam was born in a village called Aderada, 23 kilometers from the city of Asmara in 1979. He's not a very young man, He's not a very old man rather. <laughs> He's a young man. Uh, he married in 2013 and he has three lovely kids. He finished primary school, uh, in Adirada in 1991, middle school and secondary school 1998. And he graduated with a BA in Asmara University in Statistics and Demography in 2002. I'm cutting short, it is a, uh, he has a long uh, profile. Um, he has worked with the Ministry of Finance and National Development at different departments and also the National Statistics Office. He also has graduated with a master's degree in international from the International Institute of Social Studies at the Netherlands, The Hague, in 2017. Uh, most welcome, um, Mr. Mengistu. We are looking forward to uh, hearing, listening to your presentation with a lot of interest. Thank you. Okay. 
Good afternoon, my colleagues. Okay, so I will start. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank all the organizers uh, to be here and uh, share our experience on behalf of my colleagues here in the conference. So my, my presentation will be focused on Eritrea and the 2030 agenda. And mainly Eritrea, for the first time, it was prepared a VNR on July or the last, on July 12th. So based on that, we'll share our experience. So the presentation will focus mainly on, first we have introduction, then the process of the preparation of the VNR, then the result of the VNR, then the challenge and the support we need and the, the way go, the way forward. So we'll start. The <clears throat> credible national data system for evaluating progress towards the SDG. So as introduction, ETRA prepared its first VNR, uh, national review reporting aim to assess implementation of the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. The VNR briefly touches all the uh, SDG goals. However, due to the lack of uh, data and uh, due, to, due to the linkages of the two goals, we emphasize on two goals, <laughs> SDG 3 and SDG 13. The purpose of this presentation is to share the country's experience, including its success, gaps, and challenges and support needed. So first we introduce our, those who don't know where is Eritrea is. Eritrea is located on the Horn of Apica and achieved its independence in 1991 with the total uh, area of 124,000 and 3.4 million population. And the population also comprises about nine ethnic groups and its life expectancy also six, seven years. The most important we want to share our experiences, the process of the preparation of the review of the VNR. So Eritrea first uh, inaugural VNR process formally with its expression interest to the UN and the SDG is under the Ministry of Finance and National Development, which is umbrella for the National Statistics Office. So the National Statistics Office takes the mandate to prepare the VNR first. And we prepare a task force comprised of the, from the National Statistics Office and the Ministry of Finance and National Development with a small group. Then first, when we assess all the goals and targets of the SDG, we try to focus on SDG 3 and SDG 13. Then after that, we form a multi-institutional national SDG task force, which comprises from the Minister of Health and the Minister of Land, Water and the Environment, which is a national task force. The task force prepared and approved a comprehensive concept note, roadmap, and detailed work plan. The terms of reference outlines of the report. Here is some of our meeting and the national part of the national task force. Then we'll go to the then establish two thematic working group headed by the senior experts from the Minister of Health and the Minister of Land, Water and Environment and comprising members of from a total of 23 stakeholders. The process of the review was a participatory and all inclusive exercise. Those task force thematic working group also, they have also called some mini task force, including other stakeholders. Data and the scope. We made preliminary assessment what we have on the data on the sectors. Preliminary assessment were conducted during multi-stakeholders consultation and convened by the national task force and working groups. The task force uh, um, conduct a meeting regularly on two weeks how is the process is going on. 
So based on that, we have some uh, achievements, some progress on the SDG3. In SDG3, progress is being registered toward achievement, universal health coverage. Health services are heavily subsidized in our country. Maternal mortality ratio dropped from 90, 998 per 100,000 in 1991 to 228 into 2015 and 184 in 2019. Between 1990 and 2020, neonatal mortality rate was reduced from 35 days per thousand live births to 18, while under five mortality rate was reduced from 153 to 39. The country is transitioning from pre-elimination toward elimination of malaria. More than 95% of the children fully immunized for their age. As you see in the graph, neonatal and under five mortality rates. When you come to the SDG 13, we, ha we had some uh, data challenges. However, we try to address some of the targets and goals. Number of persons affected by a disaster increased from 26 per 100,000 in 2015 to 551 per 100,000 in 2021. Climate change mitigation and adaptation focusing on the area of energy, forestry, and waste has been underway. A number of projects in place to conserve, restore, and enhance natural areas, including regular nationwide afforestation campaign. When you look at the picture, uh, most of our population, uh, around 60 to 65, they use the source of energy from woods. So this uh, kind of uh, energy saving uh, stuff they use for all of this in the country, and it is energy efficient and safe, safe stuff. During our assessment of this SDG two goals, we identified lack of limited data availability, limited stakeholders engagement in person due to the COVID-19, lack of national and subnational level SDG database. However, we need support also in need to, in need to strengthen the national and subnational level SDG database, technical capacity in data collection and compilation, generation analysis and dissemination for national SASIX office and other government departments. So the way forward is we identified the gaps and the challenges, and we have a plan to strengthen the statistical system across the sectors and the, our regions with the support of the UNDP. So thank you for listening. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mengisto, uh, and also for your flexibility and accepting to share with us uh, the good progress you are making uh, in terms of uh, 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 strengthening your national statistical system, but also uh, a great job in terms of uh, managing your SDG program in the country. Now, um, I, uh, as we can see, there are quite a number of similarities, uh, but also different countries are taking different approaches and are making different recommendations. And that's really the value of us being here, that we have um, uh, all these uh, recommendations discussed, and together we can agree on what strategies we take uh, and adopt and use to strengthen our systems. Now, I would like us to spend the next 15 or 20 minutes, if we can exceed a little, uh, on interaction. And uh, therefore, the floor is now open for discussions. I think we can take a set of three to five. If need, if there is need to respond, then we can ask the panelists to respond quickly. Um, if it is okay, you can highlight when you are making your comment, which panelist the point is addressed to, but otherwise we can also ask any of them to, to respond to the questions. Thank you. So I see one, two, uh, the third in front and the fourth in the middle. Uh, let's take those four in that order. Okay, so thank you, uh, Gilson Pina, National Director for Planning from Cape Verde. And I have to make a complaint to Joan. 
he makes me to use headset. He speak French, English, and also Portuguese, but he also speak in in, in Italy. <laughs> Italian. Um, so I have I have a, um, two questions. I think it, it it can be for for all uh, in terms of the the data production. First, um, we for the for the presentation you can see the similarity for all of you. Uh, but the question is, first one uh, to to Camille. Uh, when you start speaking, I thought you are from uh, National Statistics Institute institution, but actually you are from Minister of Finance or National uh, Directorate of Plan Planning. Yes. Um, this is the question: How we can um, have? Uh, let me see the independence of the data production, uh, because you are talk about the the data production in your account like uh, a representative from the from the national statistics not from the usually minister of finance use should be uh, the the let me say the agents to use data and not produce data so my quest for you is how we can make sure that there is a data independence in the um, data produce independence in your in your in your country uh, another one is uh, the coordination uh, i saw from your presentation that neither of you you don't have the full production of the old indicators for SDGs. Uh, how we can choose the, um, the indicators to produce? It's about uh, because you don't have the, the only one that you have capacity to produce, or you have to choose the most important one. Uh, so you have to choose, or it's uh, only way to, to that. The last one is, uh, um, I can mean, yes, yes. Uh, is the coordination with the, with the SDG. So uh, it's related with this, this question. So John, presented from the John, and so for, for your presentation, you can see in the or, or presentation, uh, you show that there's some similarity between your uh, uh, statistical production and also with, with SDGs. The question is how we can make sure that the data you are producing is the data that is really indicated for, for the uh, evaluation of, of the SDGs and also, of course, the link between the national planning and also the national strategic plan and also the, the SDGs indicator. So thank you very much. Okay, merci. Je vais parler en français, il n'y a pas de problème. Donc, euh, ma question euh, à Madame la représentante de Belarusi sur la question exactement sur la, la plateforme euh, des, de, de, pour la collecte des données. Quels sont les canaux de, de coopération avec les différents des, euh, producteurs de la formation statistique pour alimenter directement et, et, et de façon régulière la, la plateforme Donc, Quels sont les mécanismes, ou bien les canaux utilisés et mobilisés pour que la plateforme de collecte de données soit alimentée de façon régulière et automatique Merci. Do I need to ask? No, I haven't been asked. Yet. Do I ask, ask the question? Or no. you nobody answer them? Yes, I think this was number three, but uh, oh, yeah, yeah, please. She, she can. No, please go ahead. Okay. Well, I think you go ahead. Okay. Yes. Okay. You know, just wanted to understand from the panelists. Uh, I'm Alok uh, from Government of India. I just wanted to understand that what has been the success in terms of developing open government data systems because more often than not government keep all that great data to themselves it doesn't reach even the academic community so just wanted to understand that what has been the success and how you know you have gone about it if you have been successful yes thank you for the presentation i just uh, uh, i have a follow-up question and my um, interest is uh, uh, on the cost of uh, um, the system that you're building up, especially, you know, uh, the two of you especially were uh, talking about uh, um, developing an architecture of data, uh, which is quite articulate and um, relying on technology. I guess it would be digital uh, systems, digital tools that uh, will help 
uh, define the uh, indicators. Uh, my question is, how much does it cost? Not only the investment to design the architecture, but to uh, systematically feed the data into the system. Because what I've seen uh, in other, for example, European projects is that a lot of money is spent um, and a lot of time also is uh, dedicated to designing you know, the system. But then uh, the project falls short of data on a regular basis and the disaggregation of data is another issue. So I was wondering, for example, if you can give me an example, especially um, the delegate from the Cape Ver uh, Capo Verde um, about indicators like openness, participation, transparency. Uh, can you give us uh, you know, some examples of how you uh, characterize or, or even measure uh, these dimensions on a regular basis? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I see two more hands. Why don't we take those two and then they address all of them at a go. So I see a lady behind and then Mr. Mwonge. Maybe we should have asked the people who are making comments to introduce themselves so that uh, others also know uh, whenever you're making a comment. Um, good afternoon, Fadumo from the Somalia National Bureau of Statistics. My question is uh, specifically to Mr. Mengustu. Um, uh, we, Somali also, um, uh, produced its first voluntary national review report this year as well. Um, I, you presented sort of similar challenges that we also uh, experienced um, in um, feeding data into the SDG indicators and reporting on the SDG indicators. What I wanted to ask you was, uh, you, I saw that Eritrea made significant gains uh, in goal three. So I wanted to ask um, how period, how period, your decline, sorry. Um, did you track progress towards those indicators? Um, you know, were baselines established, things like that, were there data gaps? Because this was something that we experienced uh, um, doing this in Somalia. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, the presenters, for the wonderful work. My own name is James Mwange from Uganda Bureau of Statistics. Uh, just two points. I think I was intrigued by the, uh, the, the the low numbers of people who joined the dancing club or the singing club, and that is about use of data, because utilization of statistics is key to the political aspect, because they are the financials. And if we are to sustain statistical production, we need to bring many on board to start singing statistics. But unfortunately, those who make decisions do not like to sing statistics. So in terms of sustaining the SASCO production and ensuring that we have, we can ensure that the systems, whether it's monitoring and evaluation, is provided with the inputs that will cause change. Kind of would like to hear some more experiences. How are you? strengthening the partnerships we've talked about, because some of the partnerships is not only a partnership between the statistical producers and government, but also partnerships within the producers of statistics, because they are descent, the menaced producers of statistics in some of our countries. And so how do we, what are the experiences in ensuring that these partnerships last, let me say, even beyond SDGs, because now, we also have national requirements. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so I, I have been informed that we have to get back to the plenary at five exact, but the good news is that we have adequate time to get the questions responded to and we wrap up. So I'm going to ask that we respond uh, in the reverse order, if that is okay, uh, because there are more questions for Camille and Zhao. So they, they, are, they will summarize with the longer ones. So let's uh, respond in reverse order. And I'll start Peter with this evening. If you have any other comments uh, that is each, kindly note it down. And by the time they finish responding, we can give them and they address it as well. Okay, so I will start the question from the, my Somali colleague. 
So uh, when you give us the task to prepare the VNR, we assess all the uh, SDG goals and what is available data. So we choose based on the availability of data, which is the SDG three. So the SDG three, which is a health aspect, the Ministry of Health has a strong health management information system and with strong uh, monitoring and evaluation system. And based on that, in 2014, we also presented at the UN side event, and uh, the health achievement was uh, there presented there. So uh, the Ministry of Health has a strong health management information system. And the other question also, how is the statistics independent when while it was under the Ministry of Finance and National Development? When we say the Ministry under the Ministry of Finance and National Development, the National Statistics Office is semi-autonomous. So I think the, it is we can call it independent. On based on the, the question on data open source, when we assess all the SDG and prepared all the VNR we conclude that we decide to have a database on SDG and prepare uh, and establish a unit uh, to monitor the SDG process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Madam um, has asked me to translate for her the question which was asked in French. Uh, according to my note, the question was, around the cooperation channels within the national system uh, and uh, establishing a platform where data is automatically updated. So in other words, how have you managed to develop uh, a system where data, uh, all this data enters in the system and there's an automatic update in the, in the data system? You want to okay. respond? Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues. I represent RBMMND team at UNDP Belarus, but uh, my name is Katerina, but today I will act as a non-professional non translator for my colleague, national partner from Belstat Statistical Institute. So I will be speaking from I, from the first person, but it'll be, it will be Elena producing information. Thank you very much for the question. The platform is a very good instrument for interaction with the producers of data and for distribution of this data. For the, produ uh, for the producers of data to put this information to Bellstat, uh, there were uh, personal cabinets created for them, for each of them. And according to the specific schedule, once a year, uh, each year, they like upload the data. There is a roadmap to, for the producers of data to understand uh, what time and day they should uh, upload this data, when it should be available. And all the lists, all the indicators, they are distributed between the producers of data. And now we are using the format of SDMX, which allows to distribute the data with metadata. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam, uh, for the response and uh, again for the rich sharing. Let me now uh, ask uh, Madam Spencer first, and then we shall conclude with Joe. Okay, so this is the quickest response to eight questions. One, how do we maintain independence? Legislation. Two, <laughs> um, how do we choose the, which SDGs to report on? One was a capacity issue, yes, because we had the capacity with this data, we reported on those, but also we are partnering with the University of the West Indies to do an omnibus survey to collect the actual data for the other indicators that we don't have in reference to the SDGs. Three, how can we make this data to ensure linkage between SDGs and national development strategy in Vision 2030, our national development plan, 
all 17 SDG goals are represented. So as we measure our progress in terms of our national agenda, we are simultaneously measuring our progress towards the SDGs. Fourth, success open data, my colleague would have answered a part of that, but we do produce all our reports. They are public for public consumption, so anyone can have access to it. Five, the cost of the system, very expensive very expensive in our national budget. We actually have something we call a line item as special dedicated budget towards transformation of this statistical system and that statistical office. So I can tell you in US dollars, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a couple million US. It's, it's huge, all right? And question seven, use of data uh, utilization. How do we strengthen partnerships? I will tell you two words, champion. Champion, we need to have champions at the political level. Our minister within the Ministry of Planning and Development is our champion for ME and for data. And also you need to tie funding to data. No data, no money. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Can we share your microphone with uh, Zhao so that he can respond? Laura, <clears throat> grazie. La domanda. Um, relativamente alla, ai handbook che noi abbiamo la responsabilità di produrre ancora un prodotto che non è finito per cui stiamo lavorando su e l'idea è, è questa abbiamo otto indicatori allora condividiamo con il nostro partner internazionale che lavorano due uh, due indicatori, per esempio abbiamo non discrimination, credo che sia adesso sulla responsabilità se non mi sbaglio, nel Messico no? che lavorerà sul, su, se non mi sbaglio eh? abbiamo qua un signor De Messico che può pronunciare su questo, ogni paese ogni istituto di statistica lavora su due indicatori perché sarebbe impossibile Capo Verde per la sua dimensione di capacità economica di lavorare su questi otto indicatori. Allora condividiamo indicatori, ma sono fondamentalmente indicatori qualitativi e che non, non è che si profitta dei dati amministrativi o altro per produrre questi indicatori. Alla fine sono indagini, indagini che si, indagini che si fa per capire la sensazione, come dire in italiano, per capire la percezione della popolazione su questi indicatori, sulla, sulla discriminazione, sulla democrazia, su queste cose. Allora sono indagini che costano tantissimo. Allora, sì, ogni paese, come avevo detto prima, ha la responsabilità di produrre un'indagine che si sì, dopo si va a lavorare e, e condividere con tutto il mondo quando il land book è pronto. Uh, Relativamente in generale, parlando in generale della, del costo de, della produzione della statistica, come la professoressa Sassai, è altissimo, il costo è altissimo. Eh, noi a Capo Verde adesso stiamo lavorando su quello che, che, che chiamiamo il master dat per profittare il massimo dei dati amministrativi collegando tutte le istituzioni che producono i dati amministrativi. Grazie. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's give a round of applause to, to our panelists and another final round of applause for all the participants in this, in this session.